Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome back to another video it's Ibrahim Muslim and today I'm back with another video on hack and tosh so this is the video in which I will teach you how to make a Ryzen tosh on your Mac OS and in the very next video I will be teaching you how to make a Ryzen tosh system or Ryzen tosh using a Windows computer so let's start with a Mac system because it's easier way and it is basically a shortcut for those who already own a Mac or a hack and tosh and they want to just make a Ryzen tosh so uh, right now I'm on uh, Intel based uh, Hackintosh and we will be making a Ryzen Tosh which is placed right next to me. So let's start with the video. So in this video I will try to make everything as neat and clean as possible. So in this video I will be using a new way to teach which is using a uh, written text. So the first thing is you need four basic things. The first thing is you need a USB drive with 8 GB storage or more 8 16 GB is recommended any Ryzen Tosh hack and Tosh or Ryzen Tosh PC with 1000 to 3000 series will work and I have not checked the latest 5000 series so I'm not sure about that but that might work as well so XT models of Ryzen processors are also uh, supported any AMD GPU basically works any latest one like the very old the very very old uh, graphics card does not work but 400 500 series Vega and the latest RX 5000 series works pretty smooth. The support for Rise, uh, the support for RX 6000 series is coming in the few next updates. So that's uh, a very good news as well. We have seen few files mentioning their support in Big Sur Beta 2. So we have our hopes high. And then the last thing is you need a Mac OS machine. So after that, we have a very pretty clean path. So the first thing is you have to watch the YouTube video which I am currently recording. So I have not posted this uh, yet. So you have to watch this video to get through all this very easily. And the link for this text will be available down in the description below to ease your path in making the machine. The second step would be downloading the open core configurator. So I have just made a new shortcut for that. So it becomes easy for everyone to find the latest open core uh, bootloader every time so let's open this link and ta -da, you just directly drop on this page what you got to do is you have to just download this and it's clean as hell you don't need to do anything so just click cancel and voila so the open core configurator is downloading so once it's downloaded it will come here but we will use our older one and after that once the open core configurator is downloaded what you have to do is you have to basically download the open core bootloader. I'm on a 6.5 development, development uh, version, so you don't need a development version for your Hackintosh Big Sur. All you need is any open core version newer than 6.3 or including 6.3. So let's download a 6.4 open core version. And before that, okay, let's before that, just let me show you. So this is my installed Mac OS Big so usb drive so i will name it os x and i will do a fresh install on this and what you have to do is basically before we do a fresh install you have to place all the files and from here from open core you can go here as well tool and mount efi so once the mount.efi is open all you need to do is go to your usb drive the name of the drive is mentioned right here so my is wd my passport and this is an ssd i use ssd because they are pretty fast and it makes the life so easy to make installers and stuff so we mount this and i don't know why it's lagging so much open core gonna need this uh system modified so once this is mounted we will see if it's mounted or not so here is the efi drive which is mounted okay so after that the efi drive is mounted all you need to do is open code download you have to click this you have to click this the oh if you are uh, watching this video later in the future you will be having more versions available here and then you have to uh select your partition be careful about that only mount one efi at a time to avoid any confusion click efi and then click download so we will click download it's downloading the bootloader and it will extract it will unzip the bootloader into the efi and voila we open this we find all this and this is our bootloader now you have to replace this config.plst with the config.plst i have provided here so this config.plst is same as this config.plst because that's 
what I uploaded. So what we have to do is we have to go to our EFI partition, config OS X, delete this config.plst and place this and unzip here. So in this config.plst, it's designed for Ryzen Hackintosh and I have almost included every patch fix that will help your Ryzen Tosh to boot. So before that, so, and there are a few changes. This config.plst is uh, developed for Gigabyte ORS B550 Elite um, version. So if you have any different version, you might have to tweak it a little bit. So I will tell you how to tweak it. So let's open the config.plst and okay so here we are so right now you can see in a cpi section we have this ssdt cpu r and ssdt usb desktop exe if you are on b550 motherboard chipset b550 then you need this ssdt cpu r otherwise if you are on x570 or b450 then you do not need this so only for b550 motherboard you need this and this is compulsory for all the other Ryzen Hackintoshes and for Intels as well, but here we are just talking about Ryzen. Then we go to Booter. In Booter, we have to use avoid runtime defrag, enable safe mode slide, sync runtime permission, rebuild Apple memory map, and provide custom slide. Down here, you can just basically remove this. This is for this is for Intel HD. I will remove this when I upload. I will edit the file. I forgot to remove this first. And this is for my Aquitine. And this is also, this is also. Okay, so this one is the important one only. You won't be finding this in your uh, config.plst. Okay, after that, you need panic no cax, disable linked jet sun. This is for Hackintosh, uh, this is for Ryzentosh specifically. Power time kernel panic, exit CPI power port limit. And you also need dummy power management because you don't have the real power management on a Ryzen Tosh. Then you need these CACs. These are the basic CAC that are required for all the Ryzen Toshes. But if you are using a different motherboard, you might need any different CACs for your LAN card. So if you have any other Ethernet card, you have to go to download and update CACs. And then from here, you can choose Intel Mosai, Autorus E2200 Ethernet, or Realtek RTL8. 11 or r1000 sl so the details are mentioned here for which motherboard which ethernet card you can use which text so after that we move to the next step which is miscellaneous so the timeout is five seconds in the config.plst i have uploaded if you want more time to decide you can choose it to 15 but five seconds is probably enough if you go to debug you will see these these three are necessary for your Ryzen Tosh in the start and these options are also necessary so these are already mentioned these are already done in the config.plst if you download from the link okay down here in NVR we have to see this so ALC ID my audio ID is one for my Hackintosh it can be different for yours so you can try a couple of different versions if your audio does not work with this basic settings which is one and you can also choose 13711 also these are also required and without npci 0x2000 i do not get display so this is very important so i have just mentioned this without this i do not get my hackintosh to boot at all so this is very very important and i highly recommend that okay then in platform info so this is platform info which will be available in config.plst but and i will highly recommend you to do go to my imac pro 1.1 and give it a fresh look so every system gets a different id and not all of you end up using my id which i mentioned so i highly recommend that you do this so all of you guys get a different serial number and details also don't forget that once you select this add this section to config will be removed and you have to take this again so don't forget to click this otherwise you will lost your config file from the uh, config.plst so this is very dangerous without this the system won't boot and you will feel that what the hell gone wrong okay in apfs these settings are already selected very important for your Ryzen Tosh. very important very important these drivers are also included but you have to still verify they are here and all these settings are as it is so that's all the easy part for your Ryzen Tosh. 
So you will still be wondering what's the difference in our Ryzen Torch, Shagun Torch, config.plst and an Intel one. So let's let me show you the real deal. So what makes a Ryzen Torch, Shagun Torch uh, possible. So this is what makes a Ryzen Torch Hackintosh possible. We go to kernels and we go to patch. So these are the patch which make the Ryzen processor work with our Mac OS. So this is the magical text patches that some excellent developers out there, some excellent people have developed. And I really appreciate really really appreciate their support and their uh, efforts on this issue so you can also see what each of them do and they are excellent in this okay so i have already placed these kex for you here and all the enabled ones are very very important if you need any other kex patch specifically for your motherboard you might have to add this here but do not remove any of the patch I have already placed and this config.plst will not work on an Intel based Hackintosh so don't forget that don't use this for an Intel based Hackintosh okay so this magic patch is already including and so after that we just have to install the Mac OS X on the USB drive and try this EFI and see what we get in our hand so if you are lucky enough you will directly boot into your Hackintosh without a mess but sometimes the luck is not there and you might end up in issues. Also, don't forget to mention the, the issues in comment section below so I can help you out. But still, it's been a great deal. So let's go there. Let's save this, cancel this. So this is our beautiful EFI folder, which we just created. Just a cross check. We got all the drivers here. We got the text here. We got the ACPI here and tools here resources are like resources these are custom ones that are designed for my system so so they are not useful for yours and these are for intel as well so remove that so after that we just copy this voila and we open this so we have cross-checked that everything is available in our efi folder and our config.plst is ready. So once the config.plst is ready, all you need to do is unmount this EFI partition. And now our focus is on this OS X drive. So you might be using a USB drive, but I'm here using a 32 GB partition of my SSD because SSDs are fast. And once you have your USB or SSD ready and you have placed the EFI into that EFI partition of the SSD or USB drive as I have shown we have to proceed to the next step so which is making a bootable installer okay we go to terminal we press enter and we go here in notes and OS X so in notes I have this terminal command which is for Mac OS Big Sur we copy this command okay I forgot to enter this command and Keep watching the video you now know what is setting up the final arguments now we will make an other step for you guys 7b make bootable os x usb drive use the following command so this command will work this command will work only if you name your usb drive os x all small letters and once you have this command copied all you gotta do is go terminal and before that if you have read the details you need to download macOS Mojave Catalina or Big Sur from Apple Store so you have to make sure that you have downloaded the macOS X Big Sur from Apple Store and if you have downloaded it from anywhere else than Apple Store you have to copy it into your application folder and once you have copied this you will be able to see your Mac OS X here so that means it's in your application folder once it's in your application folder all you gotta do is open the terminal copy the terminal command press enter enter your super secret password and you gotta wait for a second all right if this thing stuck this way you have to make sure you open this for once and once you have opened this you won't be having this issue i think this is because of the all the security stuff they have in mac os x pixel so close this let's open this uh, i'm pretty sure because 
I was having this file stored into my server. So that's why it's doing this. And this can also be useful for those who have downloaded the Big Sur from anywhere else than Mac Store or Apple Store. See, so this is uh, the issue that was the terminal command was not properly working. All you got to do is open settings, go to system settings, and tell this goddamn machine that it's all right. It was downloaded from Apple Store. I just placed it into my server. And let's see if it's working or not. Okay, so now it's working. Okay, you can just close this again. Go to your terminal, paste the command again, press enter, go here. Okay, see, now this appeared. Press Y and voila. So the magic of SSDs is, okay, you have to allow the permissions. Okay, the magic of SSD is what? Activity disk and you can see the read write speed will appear here 403 that's pretty fast i'm gonna copy the whole 12 point something gb of the installer into the drive in a few seconds if i go here update frequency to just one second you will see the data throughput Ooh, 500 mb it's 15 50 percent done which means it's six and a half gb or more done and because of that we will be able to continue the video without waiting for the installer to complete because it's gonna take like few seconds why are not you visible here okay we are done with making a bootable installer and close this close this close this close this minimize this close this so once we have our uh big sir so now you can see the name is changed we open this you can also place few of the important files right here so you just avoid going back to your hackintosh machine once it's up and you can mainly copy this this is just for making the process easier for you and it has nothing to do with the installation just keep this here with this they are the very good couple okay so last time before we move to our hackintosh or risentosh hackintosh i will just mount the EFI to make sure it's there and it's not written and overwritten and anything worse going to it. Okay, it's probably uh, here and that's a very good news. Okay, just do this, eject all, it will be probably for me. So we are pretty much ready for our Horizon Tosh Hackintosh to boot. So now we'll be moving to my camera recording and I will be making this a second part of the video so that's all for this video guys and in the very next video i will be booting the ryzen tosh hackintosh for the very first time and we will go through all the process you need to go through to boot your b550 motherboard or x570 motherboard hackintosh ryzen tosh i will be booting this we will be camera recording all the process so if anything goes wrong we will be able to see and if that help if that problem helps you guys to solve your problems that would be great so stay tuned and we will be booting our Ryzen Tosh Hackintosh in the very next video. So until that, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. And until the very next video, please take care. Allah Hafiz.